With Top Automotive, I got a 2006 Cayenne S model. And what we're doing is we're actually diagnosing a problem. No check engine light. Uh, the car cuts out randomly. Car runs perfect, smooth, until uh, we'll pull up our data. Look at that reading right there. We we'll keep watching it. We'll get a high reading in a second of 99 crank degrees, which is pretty much impossible to idle. There you go. So that right there tells us we have a problem of some sort in the electrical circuit of the camshaft system. So this would be bank one right here. It's bank two. So uh, we're going to need to further check the connectors and see if there's excessive corrosion in the actual uh, wiring. But another problem these vehicles have, I'm going to take this off, is uh, we got the camshaft deviations right here. They're at zero. Uh, the problem is on cold, this will show three to four degrees so it's always a wrong reading telling us that this position sensor is not giving us an accurate number of degrees so what's happening is this one always stays at zero which typically they're around one two on bank two one is always higher so you can just see it again it turned to nine nine crank degrees so what's happening is when that deviation number is zero like that and then it jumps back up it's deviating if there's a problem, normally it's related to a timing chain. If this number shoots up when you rev or let, or any of these deviate because this number is stationary. It's a calculation of what the actual crankshaft is, what the position of the camshafts themselves are because that's the variable valve timing. It actually reads the position. So when these numbers change drastically, that could indicate a problem with the actual camshaft itself the adjuster unit or the timing chain or you know it could be a restriction in the oil flow to the solenoid or the solenoid itself of course when the solenoid typically fails there's going to be could be collateral damage as well to the main computer because of the uh, driver in the solenoid being driven by the actual computer which is the DME the digital monitoring computer that's in charge of that so that's how we diagnose uh, this particular problem. Uh, it only started showing up as it warms up. It doesn't show up um, when it's still hot, when it's still uh, on a non-hot type of engine, when it's kind of cool. So right now we're about close to operating temperatures. I mean, not quite. Uh, let me see. We're at we're at about 210. And let's see what our oil pressures are. We're at about two bars. Um, so, I mean, we're probably at about 160 Fahrenheit on the oil itself. So, that is it, folks. Uh, this is why this vehicle is cutting out. Now, I'll probably make an update video, but more than likely, we have a problem with either the sensor or the wiring itself. This is why it's so easy to misdiagnose this problem, because... We're not actually getting the check engine light right now. Let's see if the fault, see if we got any faults. We're getting zero of anything. Customers complain as, hey, my car just shuts off. There's a hundred things that can cause that to happen, you know. There's a fuel pressure problem. You can have a restriction. See, no fault code. So that's why it's important to know how a system works and what the boundaries are supposed to be. Because if you don't know... The mechanic doesn't know how to do that or doesn't know how, what's calculated, how these particular cars work. Um, a possibility could be where they're going to be throwing parts, you know, they're going to start replacing components. Who wants that? You know, that's going to be a very expensive ride for a customer where they're going to have to be replacing components. Um, I'm going to show you where the actual sensors are located. So, camshaft number two sensor located right there you can actually see the bolt 
right over there. It's kind of hard to see with this flashlight. Let me see if I can make it better. It's going to be a Torx type of... There it is, right there. And then number two, number one, is located in this cavity. It's hard to get to. It's a little hole. Uh, these secondary air injection pumps we'll be removing and we'll be checking. But before we even replace anything, we always check the uh, wiring. That's a common issue with moisture intrusion on some of these older ones or anything like that. But I'm, I'm willing to bet that we have a problem with the actual sensor itself. So once we remove it, we'll know. We'll do a, another test on it. Uh, so yeah, that is it. I just want to thank you for watching and have a nice day. Comment below if you have any questions.